All right, guys, so we got a bunch of questions, a lot of good questions here. Um, I'm kind of just going to go in order in which they were asked. So starting with Ali Tom. Ali Tom asks, what's your favorite vocal technique to do and why? Um, that's tough. I have a few different ones that I like to use, but I would say right now my favorite to do is the tunnel throat. That's like the... <laughs> Obviously, I can't scream right now, but it sounds like that. Um... That one, I would say, is my favorite just because it's so different sounding compared to a lot of the other screams, and uh, it seems to be different every time I do it, which might just be an inconsistency thing on my part, but um, sounds unique, sounds kind of terrifying at times, um, so I'd say that's probably my favorite, but that's not a thing you can really do for a full song, kind of get old pretty fast, um, so I would say like my favorite one to do if I'm doing like a full song myself would just be like a low scream, just your typical guttural think it's pretty consistent and pretty brutal sounding normally. Trisha M asks, how do you recover after a recording sesh? So that varies. Um, depends how long I go, how the voice is feeling after the fact. Um, if it's just a shorter session and I'm feeling good, I usually don't do any sort of um, recovery by any means. If it's a longer session or my voice is feeling worn out, um, I'll do vocal rest and that that, for those of you that are unfamiliar, is just not talking at all. So, basically, just don't talk. So, I've noticed that, like, if I do if I do a recording, and that night my voice feels shot, if you will, if I don't talk the rest of that night and um, wake up the next morning, my voice is usually pretty good. So, just, you know, 10 hours of not talking really helps you recover those vocal cords. Zephilio asks... Circumference of the neck. Really? Uh, my dress shirt's 18. Uh, Jeff H. asks a few questions. How did you learn to scream? How long did it take? Do you think you perfected it yet or still have room for improvement? Um, learn to scream a lot by trial and error. I um, kind of would just scream along with songs I liked, and I didn't really use any sort of technique. So um, voice longevity was not good at all at that point. Um, I didn't sound good, uh, but that's kind of how I learned how to do it. I just just yelled, and um, over the years, I watched like a ton of different YouTube videos and tutorials of how to improve the scream and um, preserve your voice. Uh, so, yeah, learn to scream by trial and error, but I've taken bits and pieces along the way to get better. How long did it take? Um, I would say it took six months to start getting to the point where I could go for a decent length of time while also sounding pretty good. So I would say six months to get a basic grasp on it. Um, but then I would say two to three years. So I've been screaming now for like eight years or so. I would say two to three years I was pretty close to where I'm at now. Um, and I, I have gotten better since then. But I would say after two to three years I was pretty similar to where I'm at now. Um, but not quite as many screams in the repertoire. But in terms of how long I can go and um, the tone I'm getting, I would say, yeah, two to three years. Um, do I think I perfected it yet or still have room for improvement? Um, definitely have room for improvement. I've noticed the, the one area that I seem to be struggling with still is the, um, I don't know how to word this, uh, how long I can scream without like running out of breath, just, yeah, improving my, um, improving my lungs, I guess, is definitely something to work on. Um, I feel like I've actually gotten worse at that over the years. I used to be able to, like, scream for 10, 12 seconds. Now I'm, like, eh, six, eight seconds, and I'm pretty set. So could improve on that. And there are still times where I lose my voice. And if the technique is perfect, you really shouldn't be losing your voice unless you're going, you know, two hours straight or something like that. Um, I don't really seem to lose my voice with my low screams. It's more so that like mid-range slipknot sounding scream and the higher screams where um, I don't think I can uh, scream for that long without my voice starting to go. So can improve on that, improve on my breath control, and yeah, I think getting there, but I don't know, getting to the point where I feel like I, I'm uh, maxed out, but can still try to improve. Michael Dugan asks, how can you develop the texture and tone of your low screams better? Um, texture is all about placement, like air placement. So a lot of times when people are starting to scream, 
they're way down low in the throat, kind of get that uh, sort of sound, when really you should be aiming for like the roof of your mouth. Um, you're trying to aim higher up in your throat where you're hitting those false chords. That's what I do, I do false chord screams. Um, so when you're hitting the false chords, they're way the heck up there. So um, just aiming that up, so you're getting, you're more of rather than that's the best way I can describe it without actually screaming. As I mentioned, can't do that right now. Um, with tone, a lot of that is just mouth shape. So if if I make a sound and I go, oh, I'm not really even changing like how low I'm trying to sound, but by making a smaller mouth there, my pitch is automatically gonna go lower. My tone's gonna go lower. So if I go, oh, and if, it, if I make it kind of sound like a modified scream, it'd be like, oh. <laughs> so that's, that's how I would do. Texture's all about placement. Tone is more so mouth shape. And you will, I mean, you will want to drop your tone down. Like you're trying to, if you were using your talking voice, like trying to sound lower, but it's more so mouth shape. The OMSCT asks, what are your top three vocalists you admire the most and what mic do you use for recording? Um, the OMSCT, he has some good stuff if you want to check him out. He does full um, band covers, so he'll play drums, bass, guitar, vocals, he'll do all of that. Check him out. Um, top three vocalists, number one for me is Corey Taylor, and that's probably pretty evident with the songs I'm doing. I do a lot of Slipknot songs. Um, what I like about him, great lyricist. Um, for one, and something I enjoy about him too is he really doesn't have a wide range of screams. Like they'll vary a little bit album to album, but if you listen to a full album, his scream is pretty consistent throughout the whole thing, which kind of shows you don't need to have a bunch of different types of screams in your repertoire to be a good vocalist. So like I know I mess with a bunch of different sorts of screams, but if you have one like his that's really good, you don't need to be doing all these crazy um, types of screams. Just pick one that you're really good at, perfect that, rather than try to you know, do four or five, six different screams decently. Make one really good, and I would, I would recommend that. Um, second, I would say Phil Bozeman of um, Whitechapel. I think he was kind of like the OG of that, that low guttural scream. Um, and what he does with that, kind of going back to Michael's question, um, he puts his tongue on the roof of his mouth as he screams, so he sounds like just let it go, let it go. like he like that's just the saw of the law, but um, saw is the law, but he yeah he puts a tongue on the roof of his mouth and that gives him his sort of texture and tone which he's known for. You listen to a song, you're like, yep, that's Phil Bozeman, and I also like that he has a like um, I guess you would say hip-hop quality to his scream sometimes like in the saw is the law um he has that really fast part i like that he kind of adds that like rap faster paced type of types of screams um third I, i'm gonna kind of hedge on this one and i'm gonna put like three a three b of dickie allen of infant annihilator and travis ryan of cattle decapitation and kind of going against what i talked about with Corey taylor and saying that these guys can do any scream you can think of. Like they, they have such a wide range of screams, different sorts of screams. They can go super high, they can go super low, and they do they do a bunch of things where I just have no idea how they did the scream. A lot of times when I listen to something, um, as a vocalist, I can kind of pick up, okay, this is what they did with their mouth shape. This is what they did with their tongue placement to get the sound they're getting. But with these guys, sometimes I'm like, I have no clue what they're doing. So I would say those are 3A, 3B, just because they're so diverse in their skill set. Um, what mic do I use for recording? I use an Audio-Technica AT2020, and that's a cardioid condenser mic, I think. Um, pretty reasonably priced. I got it for under 100 bucks, and I think it probably still is on Amazon um, for that price. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. I mean, it's all about the way that you perform. It's not so much about the mic. Um, so yeah, I use that. And what I really like about that one is that it handles the low, or not the low screams, it handles all screams really well without peeking out. So if you look at some of my older videos and the biggest example of this one would be on Solway Firth by Slipknot. Um, my mic was peaking that whole time 
and um, it just kind of kills the sound quality. So my old mic was not handling that. The, a the AT2020 does really well with it. And uh, with that one too, it's like a, a mic that you hold. And I don't know, there's just something about like holding the mic and feeling like it's a performance that seems to get me in the zone more than, you know, putting a mic on a mic stand and putting a pop filter in front and kind of just screaming like that. I really like, you know, getting into grabbing that and um, screaming that way. Um, okay, this question is in Russian. Um, translated it, um, but it is asked by, wait, I pulled up how to pronounce this. Um, Arseny Bispalov. Hope I got that right. Let me know if I didn't. He asks why I don't do video with my recordings. A um, couple of reasons. The I, I feel like it's too much editing that I would have to do um, with making sure the video and the audio are lined up and um, just as another step. So that's that's a reason. The main reason is I want to make it all about the music. So when you guys are listening to my songs and I just have a picture in the background, you're only focusing on what I'm doing as a vocalist and the instrumental in the background. Um, and then it's just all about that. Whereas, you know, if I had video on, you're looking at what the heck I'm doing and you're looking at, and that's combined with the music. And, you know, we only have such an attention span where um, if you're focusing on one thing, you're not going to hear the sounds as well as if you were just listening to it. So I do it like that, and I think it's going to stay that way for the time being. Maybe I'll start doing video at some point, but for now I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, just the way I have been doing it. Um, Jack Cavanaugh asks, favorite non-metal vocalist? So over the past year, as much as I hate to admit, it's actually been Taylor Swift. I've listened to that Folklore album so many times. Um, kind of a guilty pleasure. Don't really care for her pop stuff, though. Um, she's up there. I like um, Mumford and Sons. Outside of that, um, for like rap, hip hop, I like Kid Cudi. He's probably my favorite from that. Um, so yeah, I would say those three. And with that, I think that should do it for questions. Um, if you need me to follow up on anything I talked about here or have any new questions for me, just post them in the comments and I'll just type out an answer. Um, otherwise, yeah, I think these were all good questions and it's fun to do. So hopefully I'll be back soon enough to start doing some more actual vocal covers. And um, yeah, I'll keep you guys posted and stay sick.